In case you weren't aware, the WHO or World Health Organization has classified shift work that opposes our natural innate circadian rhythms as a probable carcinogen, AKA something that probably causes cancer. That means that all people that provide these essential services to society gotta stay woke. Oh, no, no pun intended there, of the potential downsides and consequences of taking on a career that introduces a consistent disruption to your natural sleep-wake cycles. You know, the ones we've been like following for ever. Yo, yo, yo! What is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic manner. Today, as you are probably aware by now, we are double clicking on the topic of shift work and reviewing some new research highlighting how meal timing may play an important role in mitigating one's metabolic risk when it comes to navigating through this flipping of the work life script. So in the next 14 minutes and 14 seconds, we're gonna work through what classifies as shift work, the risks it induces on one's health, new human research highlighting how meal timing plays a role, and finally, some strategies to noodle on to mitigate the aforementioned risk. Because for all of you out there performing these essential services for society, first off, thank you for your service, and second, you deserve as much information as possible to keep your pretty cool meat suit and five pound mushy membrane operating efficiently. And every time we talk about the importance of circadian rhythm alignment, questions regarding shift work are always asked. And to be honest, there aren't too many great answers out there. P.S. I'm not promising great answers, but we'll see. So let's see if this research, which measured this in a very controlled and clever way, can help the cause. What do you think, production team? Why, why are we filming this in the middle of the night? Because we immerse ourselves in our work, production team. Duh. Hey, hey, no snacking. The shift work dilemma. This modern age, and roughly the last 150 years or so, has brought about many differences in way of life when compared to much of human existence. Technology, travel, work, entertainment, food, the metaverse, have us endlessly connected, yet so far away. And these dramatic shifts have had both a beneficial and somewhat negative effect on our physical and mental health. And as always, many times its impact comes down to the context in which the situation plays out. It's all about context. And of these way of life shifts, one of the most prevalent in this modern age has been the migration of jobs from normal daytime hours to night shifts or working when one would normally be sleeping, like production team right now. This, my friends, is called shift work. And about 25% of the U.S. population are shift workers going against their innate biological wiring. The circuits that prefer us being active during the day and resting at night, opening up the door for disruption of their sleep-wake cycles or circadian rhythms, and straight up throwing a monkey wrench into the gears of their master body clock, which is an area of the brain right outside the hypothalamus called the suprachiasmatic nuclei cluster of about 20,000 neurons. Pretty cool. And if you want a full circadian rhythm overview, we do a deep dive here and also talk about how this shift work dilemma is actually very prevalent in non-shift workers too, or people who have just fallen into the habit of sleeping through the majority of the day and staying up for the majority of the night, a phenomena called digital jet lag, which I'll link all relevant videos to below. Now, in most cases, this shift to a nocturnal life comes with consuming most of one's energy during that time, AKA eating when someone would normally be sleeping. And that, which we discussed in a lot of other videos, has shown to be problematic as well. And here's why. Because our body operates on this natural rhythm, it's optimized to perform certain activities and functions at specific times of each day. Not to say it can't do it at all hours, but it is optimized in the best position to carry out the task most efficiently, typically at certain times. For instance, the preliminary data suggests that we are most optimized to metabolize our energy from food between late morning to early evening. Most people happen to have their peak cognitive function between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. And we perform key repair and rejuvenation activities when we sleep, typically getting the most work done between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. 
but when we happen to override the system, consciously or unconsciously, consistently performing activities like eating, when we're not optimized to digest and metabolize nutrients, the 10, 15, 20 year health outlook typically ain't pretty. In fact, circadian dysfunction has been associated with many, if not all, the conditions classified as Western disease, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, hypertension, neurodegeneration, and overall obesity. Yeah, not a great list. And the data we have to date is pretty telling. Night shift work, which is highly prevalent in industrialized countries, has been shown to be a substantial risk factor for prediabetes and type 2 diabetes, with the data identifying a clear association which couldn't be fully explained by differences in lifestyle, family history, and socioeconomic status. And controlled human studies have shown that a misalignment between the central circadian clock and daily behaviors, things typically seen in night shift workers, impairs glucose tolerance, while eating during the nighttime hours when one should be sleeping does the same suggesting that some sort of internal dysfunction is happening due to this circadian disalignment. And as you guys are probably aware by now, meal timing as it pertains to improving cellular and metabolic health is a topic we talk about a lot on this channel. So if you're interested, check out the How to Fast playlist for more deep dives. All of this data, along with other animal research, has provided the sturdy groundwork for overseeing health bodies, like the aforementioned WHO, to classify shift work or work that goes against one's natural circadian rhythms as basically not cool for biological school. And if you take this information and combine it with the information that we've reviewed in previous videos, such as melatonin's potential impairment on the insulin producing beta cells or insulin resistance sneaky association with metabolic disease and obesity, or how eating in general, no matter what the time, entrains our organ's peripheral clock outside of the influence of our brain's master clock, the health picture can get ugly pretty fast. Kind of like production teams drawing at sip and paint class. Oh, come on guys, it, it was a joke. It was a, come on back. I'm sorry, we can't have fun at two in the morning. I don't know what we can do. With that, let's check out this new data, which investigated whether humans exhibit internal circadian misalignment and impaired glucose tolerance during simulated night shift work when they eat at night. And if so, can eating during the daytime while still working at night prevent it. The study. Researchers enrolled 19 healthy young participants, 12 male, 7 female, into a 14-day controlled laboratory protocol involving simulated night work conditions. And I gotta say, this study was pretty unique. Due to the ultra-controlled environment and the precise schedules and protocols, the researchers were able to ensure that participants followed what they needed to follow to a T. So after a few days of preconditioning to get them acclimated, participants were split into a nighttime meal control group and a daytime meal intervention group. Basically meaning the nighttime control group followed the schedule of normal shift workers and ate during their shift at night, while the daytime intervention group ate during the day and essentially fasted through their night shift work or when they would be normally fasting during sleep. The researchers then evaluated the effects of these meal schedules on participants' internal circadian rhythms. You, you recall those 24 hour cycles that regulate virtually every single bodily function? Yeah. So what happened? First, let's start with what they didn't find. Core body temperature, the stress hormone cortisol, and total energy expenditure were not altered between groups, indicating that the central body clock in the brain was still providing a strong influence. Next, and the major finding was around glucose tolerance, or the body's ability to use and clear glucose, the energy of life, into the cells. The researchers found that nighttime eating during the shift work elevated glucose levels, with an average increase of 6.4% in the nighttime meal control group, while those who ate during the daytime, the daytime intervention group, showed no significant increase. Interesting. I wonder if it had anything to do with our friend insulin. Well, researchers found that simulated night work did not significantly affect average insulin profiles relative to baseline in either group, which surprised me and the authors too, as they called out how simulated shift work did not affect late phase insulin and how it conflicted with previous research, which had shown about a 15% increase 
due to circadian misalignment. The researchers did add that it was probably likely to differences in study design and statistical power, and I would hypothesize that a longer study duration would probably find some deeper associations between both insulin sensitivity and secretion. But collectively, researchers concluded that circadian misalignment in both the sleep, wake, and eating fasting cycles combined relative to the central circadian clock resulted in glucose intolerance in the nighttime meal group. But avoiding the circadian misalignment of the fasting eating cycles and despite the misalignment of the sleep wake cycles, glucose tolerance was prevented in the daytime meal intervention group. All of this has the researchers suggesting that the misalignment of the feeding eating cycles was the main driver of the circadian misalignment as it pertains to glucose tolerance. Now, like I alluded to before, although this was a very controlled and cleverly designed study, the two week time frame is a very short duration to identify major metabolic shifts. And I would bet a pretty penny that there were probably a number of different suboptimal changes due to both sleep and meal misalignment that were simply outside the scope of this study. And we also can't forget that people typically don't spend one week at a job that requires shift work. Imagine if one were tracked for five, 10, 20, 30 years, which is a much more realistic scenario for shift workers out there. So with all that, what are some strategies one may be able to leverage to mitigate the risk? Building your strategy. At this point, you may be asking, how do I do my metabolic best with the situation that I'm in? For example, my job requires me to work when the average person is asleep, during the night, when it's dark. So while doing that, I'd like to mitigate my risk for cellular and metabolic dysfunction as much as possible. Or you can find yourself in the commonly surprising scenario of living the shift work life without actually working a nighttime job. And if that's your case, stop that, you silly goose. Here are some things to consider. First, if you find yourself in one of these scenarios, doubling down on other healthy lifestyle habits becomes even more critical. When you eat, focus on consuming real whole nourishing foods. If you're on the go, prep them if possible. Anything to keep you on track and help you overcome those extra tempting ultra processed treats when willpower is at its lowest. When it comes to movement, daily exercise can be a cellular and metabolic savior. We'll talk more about this in just a minute. While you're focusing on trying to improve all these other habits, try to eliminate the environmental toxins and pollutants in your living space as much as possible. Have a whole video on that here. And do your best to get an adequate duration of sleep, even if it's at odd hours due to your schedule. Now, when it comes to meal timing, one thing that this research made clear is the benefits to consuming your energy during the daytime hours, as normal humans do. So assess your current habits and see how you can potentially accommodate. A strategy here could be consuming your biggest, most nutrient dense meal of the day right before or at the beginning of your shift, for example, at seven or 8 p.m. for an overnight shift. And just like all other meal timing shifts, make it a gradual shift over the course of a few weeks to reacclimate the body with fasting at night and set yourself up for sustainable change. And when your shift is over, you can head right to bed or grab a bite before you get some morning shut eye. And by doing this, you're essentially aligning your feeding fasting cycles with your day night cycles that we've evolved with for ever. Fasting when you would be normally doing so during a normal biological schedule. Now with exercise, you see, didn't forget getting some movement in prior to your shift in the evening could be advantageous too. Not only will it provide a cellular metabolic and psychological boost, but it will improve your glucose tolerance naturally, helping you store and metabolize the big pre-work meal efficiently. Movement also helps entrain your circadian rhythms, giving you a little energy boost into that nocturnal wakefulness. And we also can't forget the strongest external body clock cue we have, light from that big flaming supernova. Getting sunlight after you wake up after that post-work sleep can help maintain some normalcy with your biological operations. This will send the signal to your master clock that it's daytime, helping keep that central clock aligned. And at this point, the only thing that is clear on this complicated subject is the fact that there is no silver bullet. 
when it comes to our health. And that goes double for trying to maintain health while juggling shift work. Staying healthy while following a shift work schedule is no easy task. And to be frank, the health odds are simply stacked against you. Strategy, consistency, and a strong supporting cast of healthy habits are critical. Shift work is something that should be taken seriously and contemplated properly. And when it comes down to it, no one is going to do the work of getting or staying healthy for you. Despite the circumstances that you're in, despite the odds stacked against you, you owe it to yourself to put yourself in the very best position to feel good and operate efficiently as much as humanly possible. I speak for everyone in saying thank you for doing the essential work that keeps society running. But don't neglect your most valuable asset in the process. If you have any tips or strategies that you found success with, please put them in the comments below. You know the saying, shift workers helping night owls helping shift workers. Not to be confused with people helping microbes helping people. And as I'm experiencing firsthand here with uh, production team who's literally falling asleep on the job, finding a healthy balance has to be at the forefront of everything we... No, pr production team, those, those were the lights. <clears throat> All right, just get some sleep. I'll see you next week.